Hi, this is Terry again, <coughs> sharing with you another interesting problem: sum of reciprocal of Fibonacci numbers. Now,、uh, many of you have probably heard of the Fibonacci numbers.、Uh, in case those of you who have not, the Fibonacci numbers. Uh, are members of a sequence called the Fibonacci sequence, which can be generated as follows: You start with two initial terms, f sub one equal to one, and f sub two equal to one, and then starting from k equal to three and onward,、uh, you define the k term as the sum of the previous two. So f sub k is equal to f sub k minus one plus f sub k minus two. The first few terms of this sequence are one, one. So that's the those are the starting value, and then two. You add up these two. One plus one equal to two, and then one plus two equal to three, and then two plus three equal to five, and three plus five equal eight, etc., etc. There are some interesting properties with the Fibonacci sequence, which we will not go into here in this video. We will only mention that, for example,、uh, there's a well-known relationship. Between elements of the famous Pascal triangles、uh, and the Fibonacci sequences, so here's a uh, uh, here's a、uh, Pascal triangle. So one 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 two one one three three one one four six four one etc. etc.、Uh, these are the coefficients、uh, from the binomial formulas. Now, if you draw a dashed line like the way I did here, at certain angle, something interesting happens. For example, here's one. There's one. The next one is also one, so that's one, and then the next line you're gonna hit two numbers, right? One and one. When you add them together, you get two, and then the one after that you're gonna hit also two numbers, one and two. When you add them up, you get three, and then the one after that you're gonna get one, a three, a one. Together you're gonna get five, etc., etc. Like this, you can、uh, extract elements of the prime numbers. Now this relationship can actually be proved.、Uh, I'm not going to talk about that here.、Uh, those of you interested. Uh, in this, you can、uh, find a proof、uh, somewhere. You know, I'm sure if you Google, you'll find them.、Um, but it, it's not difficult to prove this. All right, let's look at uh, its uh, relationship with another interesting constant called the golden ratio,、uh, denoted by the lowercase Greek letter phi. It's defined as one plus square root of five, the whole thing divided by two. Again, it's called the golden ratio. What we want to show here is、uh, the first relationship, and we're going to be needing these relationship to help prove the main theorem. So theorem one for k greater than or equal to one for all k greater than or equal to one, f sub k is one over square root of five times phi to the k a minus one minus root five over two holding root to the k. We'll show later what this is. Okay, it's also related to phi. All right, so we're going to first show. We, we're claiming that you know this holds for k greater than or equal to one. We're going to prove this, and we're going to prove this using the principle of mathematical induction. All right, but before we do that, let's go ahead and start with phi, so we can simplify some of these、uh, interesting properties here. Phi is one plus square root of five, all divided by two. So what happens if you take the reciprocal one over phi? Well, you're going to get two over one plus square root of five. Now, if I multiply top and bottom by one minus square root of five, right? Then I'm going to get something uh, uh, nice here. You're going to get、uh, one plus root five times one minus root five is one minus five. So this is two over one minus five, all times one minus root five. If you simplify this, this is negative, negative. The quantity, the fraction, one minus root five all over two. Okay. Now, if The negative of this fraction equals a one over phi. If you multiply negative one on both sides, then one minus root five over two must be negative one over phi. Of course. So using that, you can calculate one plus one over phi. While one plus one over phi is the same as one minus the negative one over phi, which is one minus this fraction. If you do the math here, this is one plus square root of five all divided by two. But wait, that's phi. In other words, one plus one over phi is equal to phi. Okay, all right. So we're gonna prove we're gonna be using this to prove uh, 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 this theorem. So first of all, we're claiming this is true for all k greater than or equal to one. Well, let's start. Start. We're gonna prove this using the principle of mathematical induction. So let's start with the base case k equal to one. When k is equal to one, plugging it in, just f sub one is one over root five times the quantity one plus root five over two minus one minus root five over two. 
Why? If you simplify, this is 1 over root 5 times 2 root 5 over 2. 2 and 2 cancel, root 5 over root 5 cancel, you got 1. So, yeah. So, we have now shown that this expression uh, is valid in expressing f sub 1. All right? So, in other words, we've established the base case. Okay. Let us now suppose this expression holds for 1, 2, 3, up to k. So, let's assume this thing holds up to k. We are going to see to check if it will also hold for the next term k plus one. Now, remember to calculate k f sub k plus one, you're going to need two terms. You're going to need f sub k minus one and f sub k. So let's make sure we get this thing out of the way first. So what's f sub k minus one? Why is one over root five times? I'm using uh, uh, so instead of one plus root five over two, I'm going to call it phi. So this is phi to the k minus one, and we have already established one minus root five over two is uh, minus 1 over phi, right? So this is minus the quantity minus 1 over phi raised to k minus 1. Okay? Phi to the k minus 1 is the same as phi to the k times 1 over phi. Minus 1 over phi to the k minus 1 power is the same as minus 1 over phi to the k times minus 1 over phi to the minus 1 power. But what's minus 1 over phi to the minus 1 power? That's just minus phi. So in other words, this is 1 over root 5. The quantity phi to the k times 1 over phi minus the quantity minus 1 over phi to the k minus times minus phi. Okay? So that's f sub k minus 1. What about f sub k? Well, f sub k is 1 over root 5 phi to the k minus the quantity minus 1 over phi all raised to the k. Now that we have f sub k and f sub k minus 1, let's plug it in. f sub k plus 1 is f sub k minus 1 plus f sub k, which is 1 over root 5 times the quantity. And it's going to be complicated here. It's going to be phi to the k times 1 over phi minus the quantity negative 1 over phi to the k times minus phi plus phi to the k minus the quantity minus 1 over phi to the k. You can clearly see here there's one term, two term, uh, three terms, and four terms, right? So let's combine them. First, let's combine phi to the k times the first term, phi to the k, 1 over phi, phi to the k times 1. So this is phi to the k times 1 plus 1 over phi. Okay, so the third term and the first term give you this piece right here. Now, this second and fourth term, right, you notice there's something in common, right? Uh, namely, uh, you have uh, this minus v, and then you have this common term, quantity minus 1 over v all raised to the k. So if I factor that out, I'm going to get this, which is 1 minus, right, uh, a negative v, like that. 1 minus v. So, 1 over root 5, phi to the k, 1 plus 1 over phi, times 1 over, plus 1 over phi, minus the quantity minus 1 over phi to the k power, times 1 minus phi. This 1 plus 1 over phi is phi. Remember, we proved that here, right? Uh, 1 plus 1 over phi is equal to phi. So I can actually replace 1 plus 1 over phi by phi. This 1 minus phi is negative 1 over phi. So I can replace that. So once I've done that, now look what happened. Phi to the k times phi is phi to the k plus 1. This quantity minus 1 over phi all raised to the k times the quantity minus 1 over phi is minus 1 over phi quantity to the k plus 1. So you have this. Now, at this point, we're done. Why? Well, basically, we have now shown that this is true. But if you want to, you know, uh, write it out, make it uh, consistent with the way we define uh, part 1 here, you can do that by just replacing phi 1 plus root 5 over 2. And then minus 1 over phi is 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2. So when you do this, clearly you can see that when you assume <coughs> this expression 1 holds from 1 up to k, then it automatically implies the k plus first term will also hold. Will also follow the same formula. So, but therefore, by the principle of mathematical induction, we have now shown this expression 1 holds for all k. Okay? So we have now proved, we have proven theorem 1. We're going to use this to prove the next theorem. Okay, all right. So to get to our final piece, uh, the final theorem, we need one more step. Okay, which is we want to look at the limiting behavior of f sub k. Now, understand something. What does it mean, right? Because remember, the Fibonacci numbers keep growing; it gets bigger and bigger. So, what do you mean by limiting behavior? When we say limiting behavior, we are talking about the ratio of subsequent term as k gets to infinity. Okay, so theorem two. Let f sub k be the sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Then, the limit as k goes to infinity, f sub k plus 1 divided by f sub k equals a phi, where phi is the golden ratio. In other words, even though 
the Fibonacci numbers, they continue to grow larger and larger. However, the ratio of subsequent terms, in particular f sub k plus 1 divided by f sub k, that ratio as k goes to infinity, it settles down to a constant, and that constant being the golden ratio phi. All right, so the no phi equal 1 plus square root of 5 all divided by 2. Let's borrow the notation from complex numbers, and we define phi bar, the conjugate of phi, as 1 minus square root of 5 all divided by 2. Then for all k equal to all the natural number 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, by the previous theorem, I can refine, I can express each of this in terms of phi. So what's f sub k? I want to look at f sub k plus 1 divided by f sub k. What's f sub k plus 1? We just plug it in. It's going to be phi to the k plus 1 minus phi bar to the k plus 1, all divided by square root of 5. What's f sub k? Phi to the k minus phi bar to the k, all divided by square root of 5. When you take the ratio of these two, the square root of 5 and the square root of 5 will cancel. So all you have left is phi to the k plus 1 minus phi bar to the k plus 1, all divided by phi to the k minus phi bar to the k. Now, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 1 over phi to the k. What happens? When I do that, 1 over phi to the k times phi to the k plus 1 gives me phi. 1 over phi to the k times phi bar to the k plus 1, I'm going to get phi bar over phi all raised to the k power, but that's a plus 1 here, so I need to multiply by phi bar. At the bottom, phi to the k divided by phi to the k is 1. Phi bar to the k divided by phi to the k is phi bar to the k phi over phi all raised to k. Now, what happens when k goes to infinity? Well, let's study this. Notice, what is phi bar? Phi bar is 1 minus square root of 5 all divided by 2. What is phi? 1 plus square root of 5 all divided by 2. When you take the ratio, the 2 and the 2 cancels, you had you got to get phi bar over phi equal to 1 minus square root of 5 over 1 plus square root of 5. Now, notice something. Square root of 5 is larger than 1. So 1 minus the square root of 5 is negative. The bottom 1 plus square root of 5 is positive. A negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative. So in other words, this phi bar over phi is going to be negative. But how negative? Well, let's consider this. If you take the absolute value of the top, <coughs> one, the absolute value of 1 minus square root of 5. And if you take the absolute value of the bottom, 1 plus square root of 5, needless to say, the bottom is going to be larger. So in magnitude-wise, 1 minus square root of 5 is smaller in magnitude than 1 plus square root of 5. Therefore, when you take the ratio, it must be greater than minus 1. Right? So in other words, this phi bar over phi is strictly between minus 1 and 0. <coughs> Excuse me. Now recall, when you take a number between minus 1 and 1 and raise to a k power, and then let k goes infinite, you're going to get 0. Right? It's like a fraction when you keep raising to a power larger and larger, that fraction is going to go to zero. So therefore, we know that phi bar over phi, the quantity raised to the k power, as k goes to infinity, is going to be zero. Okay, so now go back to this piece, and we say, okay, if I take the limit of the ratio, f sub k plus 1 over f sub k, it's the same as taking the limit of this ratio here. But this guy here, phi bar over phi raised to the k power, is going to go zero. Phi bar over phi all raised to the k power is going to go to zero. So in other words, when k goes to infinity, this the top is going to be phi minus zero. The bottom is going to be one minus zero, or phi. <coughs> Excuse me. So f sub k plus one over f sub k as k goes to infinity is phi. So we have now proved theorem two. Okay. Now using theorem two, we are now going to prove uh, our main theorem, theorem three. Okay. But before we do that. Let's remind everyone that in real analysis, an important test of whether a positive series sum of a sub k, k runs from 1 to infinity is convergent or not is the D'Alembert's ratio test, which states that if the limit as k goes to infinity, a sub k plus 1 over a sub k equals to d, some constant, if that limit exists and it's equal to some constant, then k is number 1. The series converges if d is less than 1, and k is number 2. Uh, at, and diverges if d uh, is bigger than 1. Inconclusive if d is equal to 1. Okay? So this is series of positive terms, first of all, right? So the ratio test says that if this limit exists, now if the limit doesn't exist, then, you know, obviously you cannot apply this. If the limit exists, right? Because these are positive terms, so you know if the limit exists, let's call it d, d must be greater than 0. But in addition, if it's also less than 1, then you know it converges. If it's greater than 1, then you know it diverges. And if it equals to 1, it's inconclusive. We don't care about the second and third case. We only care about the first case. 
All right, so here's our main theorem. Let f sub k be the sequence of Fibonacci numbers. Then the infinite series of 1 over f sub k, meaning 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 8 plus da da da. This series, okay, is going to converge. And it's going to get converge to a finite constant denoted by cap psi, the Greek letter psi, capital Greek letter psi. Now, first, let's note why, you know, like, what, what's happening here. We know that the Fibonacci uh, sequence, its term is going to get larger and larger. Therefore, term by term, if you take the reciprocal, each fraction is going to get smaller and smaller. The question is, is it going to get small enough, fast enough, so that when I add them up, it's still finite? And we'll prove here that, yes, it is. It will be finite. And here's how we prove this. All right, so first, uh, needless to say, you know, Fibonacci numbers are all positive. So the reciprocal are all positive. So we're dealing with terms that are all positive. We're dealing with a series of positive terms, okay? Let a sub k equal to 1 over f sub k. So let, we're, looking for this we're looking at this inverse series. Let's define the kth term a sub k as 1 over the reciprocal, uh, 1 over uh, 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 f sub k, which is the reciprocal of Fibonacci numbers. What happens if we take the limit as k goes to infinity of a sub k plus 1 over a sub k? Well, that's the same as the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over f sub k plus 1, all divided by 1 over f sub k. This one well, f sub k plus 1, which is the denominator on the numerator term, I can lower it, I can bring it down to the bottom. So this is the same as the limit as k goes to infinity of the reciprocal of the ratio f sub k plus 1 over f sub k. But we have that shown. Right? Uh, in the previous theorem, we have already proved that uh, as k goes infinity, this ratio is phi. So therefore, as you, you take the limit as k goes infinity, this is just 1 over phi. Okay? What's phi? Phi is 1 plus root 2, I'm sorry, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. What is 1 over phi? It's 2 over square, 1 plus square root of 5. Now, square root of 5 is bigger than square root of 4. So 2 over 1 plus square root of 5 must be less than 2 over 1 plus square root of 4. What's square root of 4? That's 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So this is 2 third. In other words, we have now proof that 1 over phi is less than 2 third. In other words, we have proof that the limit of this ratio, a sub k plus 1 over a sub k, is less than 2 third, which is certainly less than 1. Right? So therefore, by the Dallenberg's ratio test, this series must be finite. It must converge. It's going to converge to a number. And we denote that number by cap psi. By the way, the value of cap psi, you can, you can approximate it using calculator, is approximately 3.35988566. Okay? Okay, so this is the end of this video. Uh, I hope uh, you find it uh, useful and interesting, uh, as I do. Uh, thank you for watching.